Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You are in the right spot if you're an agent, a team leader, a broker owner, whether you're at the franchise or an independent, and you're looking to work smarter, not harder, and you're looking to increase your average sale price of homes you represent, whether it be on the buy side, but primarily on the list side. That's the name of this podcast, Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast. Again, if you have an e- if you have a question and you want to send me an email about today's show or perhaps another episode, please do so. Michael at MarketingLuxuryGroup.com. Michael at Marketing Luxury Group. Of course, this show is part of the Industry Syndicate. Check it out, Industry Syndicate, where some of the top real estate contributors all are under one platform, Industry Syndicate. All right, this show, I'm excited. I've been trying to get uh, today's guest on for well, shoot, over a year now. I presented at his office in Jupiter, Florida, uh, fall of 2018. And since then, I've been trying to get him on my show. He's doing some amazing things for the industry, and I see him from time to time at some of these luxury real estate conferences. I have Rob Thompson here from Jupiter, Florida. Rob is the owner at Waterfront Properties and Club Communities. Him and I first met uh, down in Palm Beach at the Breakers Hotel. I was presenting at a Ken Goodfellow event, and him and I hit it off because he thinks like a marketer, and he's got amazing, ex- gives clients an amazing experience in the real estate transaction in the whole process. So, Rob, Rob, you there? Yes, sir. Thanks for joining me today, and um, you know we're going to talk about a couple things today, Rob. But first off, uh, you run. You're the owner of your company. You guys have about 80 agents down there in Jupiter, and you service Jupiter, North Palm Beach, Palm Beach. And uh, did I miss any areas? Uh, We do Stewart and Palm Beach Gardens area, and we go all the way to, like, Delray and Boca. Okay. And uh, overall, how's your your market down there? I know that's a a loaded question, but uh, when it comes to luxury particularly, uh, and two questions. One, what price point do you define luxury in, in those markets? And how is that market overall right now in early 2020? I would define the luxury as the million-dollar-plus market. Um, the market's been extremely good down here. We've had a record year. Um, it's done very well, and it has to do with the traffic from the northern states moving here to uh, hide from the tax burdens from you know, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a consistent theme that we have uh, from a lot of folks. We recently had uh, Jim Wahlberg from San Francisco, and he talked about the same thing as the affordability. You know, a lot of people, a lot of wealth is leaving uh, even California. So, again, we see some consistency there. You're defining luxury as a million dollars and above. You have about 80 agents on, in your office. And um, your, your wasn't your your mother the founder of the company, or she got you into real estate? My, is that correct? Uh, yeah, taught me everything I know. I, I, she started it forty some years ago, and she and I became partners. Uh, I don't know, thirty years ago, and uh, today she still works with me, eighty seven years old, and oh. reads every contract we write. Oh, that's great. Well, I visited your office. You have a nice, a great training facility, and uh, you have some really great agents. And, again, you you attend the Who's Who in Luxury Real Estate Conference, uh, as do I. And um, So iron sharpens iron. So I'm excited to talk about one of the things uh, when, when I did present at your office, uh, uh, you drove me to the airport and we were talking a little bit, and one of the things you talked about was, you know, on, on listing appointments, you know, you like to – ask if they're interviewing other agents and many times you know the other agents or other office that they're interviewing you know that they're using some uh, i guess intel 
against you in, in their mind. They think they uh, they know something that uh, the, the, the the consumer should know. And talk to me a little bit about that, and and, and share with the audience uh, kind of how that conversation goes. Well, I mean, their tactic is to say, if you list with Rob Thompson, let me tell you, you're never going to see him again. And then they say something like, you're only going to get his team. And I so, you know, I want to address that with you now. Um, let's just take that head on because you're going to hear it from all of them because they're afraid they're going to lose to me. And the reality is we outsell my closest competitor We'll do maybe 30 or 40 million, and I'll do about 200 million. With that said, I'm outselling them five or six to one. And I always tell the customer, look, whether if let's just say that they're telling the truth, that you're only going to get my team and you'll never see me again. Do you want the team that outsells them six to one or 10 to one or 20 to one and never see me again, or do you want them? And they just look at you because they didn't think about it from that angle. And I go, look, they're telling you you're never going to see me again. I negotiate for a living. That's what I do is I'll negotiate your listing with you, and I'll negotiate the sale of your property with you. But um, my deal is to, is to go out and recruit high net worth clients to come buy your property. So I can't be out networking all the time and building that database of people to put my team with to show your house if I'm out showing all the time, somebody's got to do what I do and my part of the job is harder than it is to do the, just the showing part. And at the end of the day, you want the team that outsells the other guy 10 to one or six to one or whatever the number is, or do you want some single agent tell you the team's bad, but it's bad. Why are we selling so much more than there? You bring up a good point. Uh, you know, let's just say you have six agents on your team, and let's just say there's a 40-hour work week. You know, 40 times six, do the math, that's 240 working hours in a week versus the, the sole agent working 40 hours a week. So, again, for those of you that do have a team, you know, Rob brings up a good point, leveraging, you know, having specialists within the team, leveraging other people's manpower, so that you can do and focus on what it is you do. And Rob, what, what's uh, something that you're passionate about or your unique value proposition? If, if I'm the seller and interviewing you, and I'd say, well, Rob, okay, great. So your team brings some some uh, different skill sets to the table, but you know, what, what's different about you, Rob? What, what are you doing behind the scenes? What they really want to know, and I ask them this question, I go, you know, when we compare ourselves to other agents, Sometimes a seller will walk away feeling like you badmouth the other guy or whatever. I don't want to badmouth the competition. Most of them are friends. What I do want to know is, would you like me to tell you the advantages over using me and my team and my company over the other team or the other agents? Isn't what we're really here for is for you to figure out what's the advantage for you and your family to use me and my team over anyone else? And they'll say, yes. I say, do you mind if I compare those? I'm not saying good or bad. I'm just saying different. This is what we have to offer that's different than what other people have to offer. And then they buy into the idea of, you know, comparing apples to apples, you know. Um, and from that point, we go into saying, do you believe, is it your expectation that when you hire an agent that you're going to get, uh, the agent doing the selling and then they will be behind them, behind the scenes, you'll have a um, list of different expertise, whether you have a contact writer, a blogger, uh, website experts, mass email experts, uh, photographers, videographers, people flying the drones, all kinds of different things for the marketing. And they go, yeah, I believe there's a team. They go, would you be surprised if I told you the people that you're interviewing don't have a team? Basically, what you see is what you get. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'd be surprised. I want you to go look at their offices, ask them, don't tell them why you're coming. Just say, I'd like to stop by and see you. When you get there, say, could you like to walk through your marketing department and meet your people? See, the biggest trick in real estate is letting the 
realtor come to your house so they can talk to you about price and condition so you won't see what they don't have at your office. In our case, we have a 20-person marketing department, and we invite them to come in and meet them and see what they all do. So they realize they're getting more than just an agent. They're getting a whole different team of people with a wide range of expertise that will help market their home and truly get a global exposure. So, so in your case, you, you know, you you have a, a huge marketing team behind you as an agent behind the office. For those of you that are listening to this podcast, and maybe you run a small team, but but maybe you rely on your brokerage's advertising team. Assuming they have one, great, leverage it. Um, if you are on a listing appointment and you know who you're up against and you know they don't have a marketing team, nor does their office, then, of course, leverage your assets, what you bring to the table, you know, and, and, and the various, you know, departments and team members and skill sets that you guys have. So that's really one of the things that we teach agents, Rob, is is developing your unique value proposition, but also knowing what your company's is. Uh, because if you go on an appointment and you think, hey, I'm with Waterfront Properties, and we're number one, well, maybe maybe not for you, Rob, but maybe another agent in your office is up against another agent from Waterfront Properties, and if all they talk about is why Waterfront Properties, but they don't talk about them, their, their unique value proposition as an agent and what makes them different and what they're passionate about, you know, they might lose that listing to, you know, that other agent from the same brokerage that does. So, so I like the fact, the reason that this really resonates with me a little bit is, again, the name of the podcast is Luxury Listing Specialist. Again, maybe you've heard the old adage, list to live, or, you know, the name of the game is listings, listings, listings. And, again, if you do focus on listings and you don't work with buyers much, the facts are, statistically speaking, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, in your market as well, the vast majority of listings sell with another agent, another brokerage representing the buyer. It's said differently, you know, you as the listing agent, if dual agency is allowed, maybe it's called something different in Florida than it is in Illinois or Texas, but dual agency doesn't happen the vast majority of the time. So are you managing the seller's expectations? In other words, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I want to bring you the buyer directly to the table, but statistically that doesn't happen the vast majority of time. What does happen the vast majority of time is we do bring you the buyer, but through a buyer's broker to another brokerage. So hire an agent who's a great negotiator, a great marketer. Talk to me about that, Rob, a little bit. You know, if they ask you, hey, do you, do you think you're going to bring, bring the buyer directly to the table, Rob, how do you answer that? I bring my statistics out at the table because I do a very well-defined market. I pull up all the sales with a listing agent and the selling agent on the uh, you know list of all the properties on a one-liner report mm-hmm. showing the address, the days on market, the square footage, the price per square foot, listing agent, selling agent. And what I do is I highlight all the ones I listed and all the ones I sold. And in the markets that I service, because I specialize in a very focused market, I outsell all the competition on the buy side and I outsell all the the competition on the list side, both. So I'm number one on both of those. And so what I do is I show them, look, as an example, the neighborhood I live in, Admiral's Cove, over, you know, uh, $2 million, there's been X sales. And out of those sales, I sold 11. My closest competitor sold four, and the one below that's three, and everybody else is one each. Who would you rather be with, the person that can deliver it? The proof that my marketing works is that I can bring the buyer across the finish line. If I can't get the buyer across the finish line in any case, that's proof my advertising's not working, my marketing's not working to get buyers that would purchase the properties that I market. So I use my buy side statistics as the proof that my marketing works. Well, we all have sense? different. Yeah, no, it totally does. So you have the numbers to back it. For those agents, I got that the numbers have to back it. You, you, you do, yeah. And for those of you out there that do have the numbers, again, we're starting 2020 right now. So looking back at the calendar year of 2019, really un- understand your numbers for the for the markets you serve. It's really important. 
and you need to break it down and keep it really simple. Is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? Again, we define a seller's market as when there's you know, five months or less. Six or seven months of inventory is a kind of a neutral market, and more than seven months is what we call a buyer's market. And unfortunately, Rob, in the million-dollar price point in the Chicagoland market, there's at least a year of inventory in most communities, if not two years or more. And so it's definitely what we call a buyer's market. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our luxury listing specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher end homes in your marketplace, make sure you go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. The other thing I really like that Rob talked about is is managing the seller's expectations up front. Now, he's had, Rob has his reasons as to why you probably won't see me after I take the listing, which, again, is one of the number one complaints that sellers have. Hey, I listed the home with Joe, and I never saw Joe again. Well, if Joe managed the seller's expectations, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you're probably not going to see me much. You're going to see my team more than me, perhaps, and here's why. Then you have less of those headaches and those conversations when the listing's about to expire or, you know, it's been X amount of months and there hasn't been any offers, that sort of thing. Now, one of the things that uh, you're a great advertiser too, Rob, and I know you do a ton with print but and, and digital marketing more so, and uh, I've recently read a, a quote from you that said, experts, not agents, handle the marketing side. We want an expert handling the client's advertising instead of an agent trying to do an expert's job. So you're, you're referring to the advertising and the marketing as an expert's uh, job. To, and again, you have a team that, that does a lot of that, from single property websites to, to what else do the experts do so the agents can focus on relationships and negotiating, et cetera. See, actually, my personal team, I have four people that show listings for me nonstop. They just do all the showing. And then I have a personal assistant that's like my personal admin, mm-hmm. you know, makes appointments, reservations, whatever. And then uh, we have about a 20-person marketing department that handles all of the stuff, whether it's doing the mass emails, which we do a ton of, whether it's managing the database stuff for resident email things like Bronto or uh, photography and video work and drone blogging trying to get better placement for, uh, you know, certain subdivisions on the internet. So we rank higher. But one of the things that we talked, we touched on, we talked about earlier that I didn't say one of the most important things I take to the listing presentation is I come in with all the key players in the market. I've got all of their sales statistics, not only what they've sold in that area, but what they sell in another area. So like if it's an Admiral's Cove sale, and I say, look, while they did sell three properties in Admiral's Cove in the last year, and I sold 20, you need to know that they sold 23 other properties outside of Admiral's Cove. So they spent 85, 95% of their time working in other markets, where I spent 100% of my time in this market. Do you want somebody mm-hmm. that spends 5% of their time in your neighborhood or 100% of their time in your neighborhood? So for those agents that special, specialize, carrying all the competition's sales, not only in the market you're looking at, but out of the market, is a very, very effective weapon. Yeah, that's, that's huge. And for those of you that personally might not have that market domination that Rob does, perhaps your brokerage does, or maybe another member in your office. Talk to that member in your office, even if they're not a team member, and, and maybe leverage their success until you have your own. So when you're competing with the competition, if you carry not only what they have under contract or what they sold or what they have listed, sometimes those things really work to make them less less valuable to your potential seller. They've got too many listings in a faraway area and you point that out, look where they are all the time. That's where they do all their business. The other thing to pull up is all their expired and canceled. We have one market in our area that we're trying to get into and we have shown that the comp- main competitor that everybody thinks is so great that he loses by expiration or canceled six out of 10 properties he lists. And we're showing the ones we've been doing in that market, which is much less, 
but we sell 100% of the properties that come to us where the competition that does a lot more business is losing six out of 10 to being fired or running out of listing, expiring. Yeah. And when they yeah. see that, it's like, wow, they can't believe it. So really knowing the statistics on your competition changes the game. The whole goal is walk in and get the signature, but you got to be armed for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's huge. Uh, now, you brought up the point that you have four agents that are showing your listing. So those of you out there, every price point is different. Every market is different. Uh, when lockboxes are no longer, you know, uh, they're frowned upon on a property and that somebody from the listing office, you know, or team or agent needs to accompany a showing. So, Rob, you're leveraging other team members' time and energy, and so you're managing that seller's expectation up front. Talk to me a little bit about that agent. So let's just say, Rob, you're representing, you know, 123 Jupiter Way. Um, do you meet a team member or two over at 123 Jupiter Way after you get the listing, walk them through the property, or is the owner meeting them there, walking those agents through the property, showing them the ins and outs so that when a showing does occur, because you're not going to be the one being there, Rob, one of your team members is, how do you ensure that that team member knows the property just as, if not better, than you, the official listing agent? They're always going to know it better than me. Um but at the end of the day, what I do is I go in to get the listing. Say I'm meeting somebody, and I know that they are, as an example, I have a lady that works on my team named Colette. We call her Coco for Coco Chanel. She's dripping in Chanel clothing. She's a great match for somebody who's very label conscious, high fashion type. She's not a great match for that really earthy, down-to-earth type. Sherry on my team is much better for them. And then I have Christy, who's a golfer. Um, you know, she's major into the golf thing. And so depending on what that person's like, depends on which team member I bring. I have Don, who is a local designer here for 30 years. If they need staging help bad and everything else, I bring him and they immediately bond because they think they got a free designer on me, you know? And so I bring the teammate that I think is going to, mesh the best with the, with the uh, homeowner, but then they'll bring back the rest of the team later. I don't want too many there because it seems like we can't keep the seller focused to get them signed. Uh, there's too many people, it overwhelms them. But I'll bring one or two with me and they'll write all the notes on the house and do all that stuff. I make it clear up front. I tell the sellers all the time, and my team will tell them, never give Rob a key, never give Rob a file or a piece of paper. Call us, we'll come pick it up, he'll lose it. They understand I'm not the detail guy, I'm the closer and the rainmaker. And knowing that we have a team that all does different things and that we focus on everybody's priorities comes across very well to the client. They like that. Yeah, that's great. You bring up personality types, likes and interests, trying to build affinity. I mean, you got to keep it really simple. For those agents that have, you know, team members on their team, you know, do you have a left brain analytical team member or do you have that more right brain? So, you know, Rob is a, you know, Rob's a perfect example. He's more right brain. He's creative, but down to earth, approachable. But you have that left brain analytical agent. If you're showing a buyer to uh, a property to a buyer and, and they want to know the, the age of the mechanicals and how, you know, how the, the you know how thick the drywall is and and the fine details you know you're not going to want to have that that agent that you know smiles and, and and understands basics but doesn't understand you know the analytics and the details of a property so it's really important that you pair up team members uh, that have different skill sets it's, we we um we try not to ever lose one i mean our our, our what we call the kill ratio is almost 100%. We'll get about every 18 to 24 months, we'll go after a listing we don't get. We go after it, um, it's rare. You know, every 18 or 24 months, we'll lose one. Um, but we'll do, you know, 50 to 100 listing presentations a year, and we're getting them. But what we do is we prep them before, as soon as we find out they want to sell, we send them. Uh, the most important thing we send them is a hardbound book. 
We just go to Staples and have like a hundred letters of recommendation from sellers bound together. And it's on the cover of it says what your neighbors are saying about us. And that's all it is, is copies of their emails or handwritten notes they wrote us. Um, we put the most recognizable names up front, like CEOs from, you know, big local companies right up top. But they're very impressed by that. And then we put together sold brochures and sold postcards and things we've done, put them all together and overnight it or hand deliver it to the people so that when we walk into the door, they've already read about us and know about us. We call it prepping. We prep the seller to be ready to sign before we get there. When we get there, I don't want the seller going, oh, tell me all about you. And I want them to go, man, we read all about you and you guys are great. Um, you know, they should be ready to sign when you get there if they're properly prepped. Well, you know, it, it was almost like uh, uh, you you were a plant, Rob, but this is exactly, we cover this exact topic in our uh, Module 6 in our Lux designation. It's called our pre-listing advantage, how to have a potential client pre-sold on you before you walk in the door on the actual listing appointment. So, you know, you, you put together this, you know, what your neighbors are saying about this uh, us hardcover book with, you know, testimonials, case studies, what a brilliant idea. That's a big nugget. That's a bonus nugget from today's episode that, that I didn't even know we were going to be talking about. But, again, you get that seller that says, hey, let's meet on Friday. What can you do on Monday to send them something overnight or have it delivered or whatever so that when you show up on Friday, they're pre-sold on you? And that is huge. That's a good, that's a good nugget to end on, Rob. If I'm an agent and I have a referral in that Naples, uh, excuse me, in that Jupiter area, that Palm Beach, that that North Palm Beach area, what's the best way for somebody to get in touch with you, Rob? My mobile, 561-346-1881. And I'll give you one more nugget that somebody else taught me that is unbelievable. I take Please. that package. I drop, I, I call uh, Tiffany's. You can get from Tiffany's a big Tiffany's bag and a big box with two crystal champagne flutes in it for 50 bucks, including the whole. I was searching for a bag or a box to put all my materials in, and it was going to be $10, $15, $20 to have something really nice made. Yeah. And for 50 bucks, I could get the two champagne glasses, and I just take all of my stuff, I put it inside the, the champagne, uh, the bag with the champagne glasses in it, mm-hmm. and. I put a note on it, please call me. And then uh, they look at the gift and they open it up. They can't resist. They have to call you. You send them Tiffany's glasses. And for 50 bucks, 100% of the people you send your package to will pick up the phone and call you. Where when you don't do that, the number's less. But -hmm. the gift makes them feel like, how can I not call? He gave me Tiffany's glasses. It's only 50 bucks and they're super impressed. Yeah, right. And half of them give them back to you. Half of them give them back to you, and you get to reuse them. And isn't that something? Yeah, reciprocity. That's a great differentiator right there, Rob. Some great nuggets. I always appreciate our time. I'm going to look forward to seeing you this spring. We'll, we'll be at the Who's Who in Luxury Real Estate Conference again, and uh, keep raising the bar. Appreciate everything you're doing for the industry. So thanks, Rob. My pleasure, Michael. Anytime, my friend. I look forward to seeing you. Appreciate it. And for those of you that have any questions uh, that Rob talked about perhaps today, or maybe you want to nominate somebody else to be on our show, please send us an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup. If you haven't checked out our book, please do so. It's on Amazon, luxurylistingspecialist.com. And our new website, our new website is finalized. It's in 10 languages. Check it out. All the information about our designation, go to luxurylistingspecialist.com. Again, 10 different languages. You can find out if you're looking at hosting an event. Find out all the information about us and our services. Check it out, Luxury Listing Specials. Please continue to raise the bar in real estate. And remember, to make somebody's day, never Never underestimate the power of a smile, asking someone how they're doing, and lifting somebody else up. My name is Michael Lafito. Keep raising the bar, and we'll see you until next time. It's not the market. It's the marketing. Take care. Take care.